So let's talk about the pulmonary ventilation. Pulmonary ventilation is the movement of air in and out of the lungs. <clears throat> and always remember that what drives the air movement, pressure does. So air will always go from the higher pressure to the lower pressure. Okay. Now, um, what happens during inspiration? During inspiration, air goes into the lungs, which means that the pressure in the lungs, intrapulmonary pressure, actually we're going to call it different, but we're going to call it intrapulmonary pressure, should be lower than the pressure in the atmosphere. Okay, so that will be inspiration. And during expiration, exhalation, intrapulmonary pressure should be higher than atmospheric. Okay, so we figured that out. So that's lungs, that's air. So in expiration, the air will go this way. In inspiration, it will go this way. Now, um, what happens at the peak of inspiration and the bottom of expiration? So basically, when you inhale and you stop at the top, or you exhale and you stop at the bottom, either on the top or on the bottom, the pressure in your lungs equals the pressure in the atmosphere. There is no air movement. So I hope this makes sense. Now, one really important physics law that guides that air movement is Boyle's law, which states that in the closed vessel, the product of multiplication of P1 to V1 equals P2 V2. What does that mean? If pressure becomes lower, then inevitably volume becomes higher. So we can write it down this way. Lungs are essentially a closed container. So if pulmonary pressure goes down, then volume of the lungs has to go up. It's actually the other way around. First, volume changes and then pressure changes in response. So what essentially happens when you, let's say, inhalation. So what happens? Your thorax expands, right? Thoracic volume increases. When thoracic volume increases, the volume of the pleural cavity also increases. When volume of the pleural cavity increases, well, it's not probably the best way to do that. Well, okay, volume of the pleural cavity increases, the pressure in the pleural cavity, so-called intrapleural pressure, decreases. Remember, volume goes up, pressure goes down. As this pressure goes down, lungs expand, meaning that the volume of the lungs goes up. So, volume of the lungs increases, pressure in the lungs goes down. Pressure in the lungs becomes lower than the atmosphere inhalation. Now what's going on during exhalation? Um, thoracic volume goes down. You relax diaphragm, you relax intercostal muscles, your thorax kind of becomes smaller. That means that the pressure in the pleural 
cavity goes up. Volume of the pleural cavity goes down, pressure goes up. Pressure in the pleural cavity starts to increase. It pushes on the lungs, so lung volume goes down, meaning that the pressure in the lungs goes up. Pressure in the lungs becomes higher than atmospheric pressure. You got yourself an exhalation. Now lastly, let's do some schematics here. So I'm going to be very, very like it's not an artistry. So that's, um, well, let's say it's going to be parietal pleura. So that's parietal pleura slash porx. Okay, so that is your thoracic cavity. This is lungs. So we operate with three pressures. Intrapulmonary pressure, intrapleural pressure, and atmospheric pressure. And that right here is going to be your trachea. So how we direct air into the lungs, sorry, yeah, how we direct air into the lungs when we inhale. So we need to decrease this pressure, intrapulmonary pressure. How do we do it? We expand the thorax, intrapleural pressure drops, lungs expand towards the lower pressure, pressure in the lungs drops, Atmospheric pressure becomes higher, and the pressure in the lungs, air goes in. When we exhale, we relax the chest. It becomes smaller. That increases intrapleural pressure. Increased intrapleural pressure makes lungs smaller. Volume of the lungs goes down. Pressure in the lungs goes up. Air goes out. Now, lastly, what is transpulmonary pressure? So, transpulmonary pressure, by definition, is intrapleural pressure minus intrapulmonary pressure. Now, remember that intrapleural pressure is always lower than pressure in the lungs which means that transpleural pressure normally is lower than zero. Why this is important? This what it means that lungs have the inside pressure on them directed towards outside, okay? So that what keeps that's transpulmonary pressure. It keeps lungs inflated. If the lungs if the lungs work. <coughs> if for some if for some reason these pressures become equal, which is not normal, then transpulmonary pressure equals zero. So there's no pressure that keeps lungs inflated. And that essentially leads to the lungs collapsing. If you think about a balloon, a regular air balloon, if you don't inflate it, it's completely collapsed. The pressure inside of the balloon and atmospheric pressure are the same. So what can do this? If there is a hole, some kind of a trauma, then air from atmospheric from atmosphere will get into the pleural cavity. Okay, we call it pneumothorax. Why is it going to get there? Because even when there is no breathing, there is no breathing, atmospheric pressure equals intrapulmonary pressure. So again, um, when we breathe, okay, atmospheric pressure, when we don't breathe, atmospheric pressure equals intrapulmonary pressure. But intrapleural is lower than intrapulmonary. So when there is a little wound here, 
then the air from the atmosphere, meaning that you know atmospheric pressure is going to be higher than intrapulmonary always, the air from the atmosphere will go into the pleural cavity, which makes intrapleural pressure equal intrapulmonary. And you're going to have your flattened, uninflated balloon, your lung will collapse, and we call it a pneumothorax.